Hello awesome people! I hope you're having a great day today. Today we're taking a look at the book Falcon Guard, which is the third book in the Jade Phoenix trilogy uh, that are the first three books that kick off the Rock series of the Battletech series, uh, published in the late 80s. Uh, I, I picked up these books when I was in 10th grade. They are the first Battletech books that I ever read. I really enjoyed them and then I bought a bunch of the other books that were published um, and previously uh, and did a deep dive into them the first three books in the rock series but there was previously some books published by fast that would later be republished uh, by rock later on after they, after they started to get their sales in um, except for one the second book overall which i haven't read um, it's very expensive on the secondary market uh, we've been doing a deep dive into the biotech series um, and I knocked out these books in five days. I did, if you'll recall, we had the clans, which is 240 pages long, uh, in a Saturday in a seven-hour sitting. I did a uh, blood name on, in two days on a Sunday and a Monday. The Sunday was 160 pages, and the Monday was 120 uh, pages total. Uh, the third book in the sequel is also the shortest one, Falcon Guard. It's 230 pages long, so I knocked it out in two days. Uh, yesterday and today, I did 120 pages the first day, 110 pages last night. I knocked it out. So, so I did this reread of this trilogy, uh, and I've, I have not reread this trilogy or any other Biotech works. I've never gone back and reread them since I knocked them out initially as they were getting published and picking them up from my local bookstore in southern West Virginia. Uh, it was a Walton Books at a mall. Um, so again, uh, I had knocked this out, but I haven't gone back and reread it. So I wanted to knock it out as a part of my doing a deep dive into the Biotech series to see what I think of it now, decades later. And I think there's value in doing that. Uh, we've been doing that here and there for this uh, project, uh, going back and reading things for this channel that I have not read since I was in grade school with the Fred Saberhagen, A Complete Book of Swords, in which I read in sixth grade or in, or in junior high, uh, like the Dragonlance stuff, or in high school, like this stuff, uh, or in college or grad, or grad, grad school that I have not gone back and reread, and now I'm 45, right? So having read a ton of things, uh, in, in the meantime, and having a much more experienced uh, pen, what do I think of this stuff now? I'm giving it a 7 out of 10. Uh, it's still strong stuff. It's d definitely, it was very, 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 very uh, riveting. Again, I knocked out this trilogy in five days. So that's pretty fast stuff, right? Um, and it was pretty quick. Also, this was shorter stuff than normal. Um, so far in my rereads of the, of the Battletech stuff, this stuff's the shorter stuff uh, to reread. Uh, now, this trilogy and the, the final of it, Falcon Guard, um, are, uh, are do a deep dive into the clan Jade Falcon in the 31st century um, at, into, the, into clan culture uh, and clan, col and clan uh, concepts. The first book is, is, uh, is, is basically the, uh, the uh, training camp uh, as they go through all their medals, uh, these, these, up, these soon to become warriors. So it's basically going through all that sort of training and so forth that they go through as warriors. Uh, the second book is uh, is is as the first. It's the first half is the Glory campaign. It details in detail uh, on the planet Glory at the local Glory station that Jade Falcon controls, uh, and they're attacked by Clan Wolf. So it does, so you have a couple of chapters that open up and give detail on Glory, then the Glory campaign, and then the last part part of it mostly focuses on on our, on the ritual for the Blood Name that has just recently opened. Our major character Aiden wants to fight for, um, and then the third book uh, starts off by telling some of the clan occupation. Uh, but then the last uh, half of the book will be telling the battle for Tukaid, uh, one of the biggest battles in BattleTech history, uh, in the in, in the entire universe's history, uh, and and his major part uh, in in the clan Jade Falcon battle. So it'll tell that battle from uh, and so forth. And I appreciate that this one is smaller than the other three books, but it really and one of the reasons why I'm coming into seven this is that it really feels like it didn't do the depth uh, that it needed to it's only 230 pages long and the last the last battle is like 120 pages long the last the last uh the last campaign and this is a major campaign with massive units big units big things happening right and it might dedicate like a chapter to an entire battle of, of all these various units that are happening with very little combat uh, mostly just maneuvering and strategies and such like that so i'm not getting as much you know military science fiction from this trilogy uh, as you might expect uh, the first one's got more military science fiction it has your typical you know sort of you know going i've now decided to become a warrior what's it like being a warrior in the future that you might see in something like starship troopers uh this is also a major military science sci fiction uh, work by 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 one of the big three in the science fiction genre um, so this thing starts off with more uh, science fiction uh, and those sorts of things uh, in military but this one just has it feels a lot more like it's strategy and detailing uh, and so forth and their battle scenes tend to be less 
less detailed um and I, and I feel like this could have been longer like i think like the the, the end campaign could have been in, in 2k it could have been a lot longer in fact the epilogue that happens after the end is about 20 pages long so your loot you're spending which doesn't i mean I don't, I don't think it needs to be that long i think you could have spent some of that time and then maybe another 20 30 pages um doing a, a deeper dive into the campaign of 2k uh, which was this entire trilogy is trying to tell, right? This is, is this this is the final story. It's the final battle, right? So you, so you want it to be detailed and intricate, and it is. It's a half a book, but it's still just 120 pages of a half of a half. You know, a 230 page novel, right? It's not that uh, detailed and entrenched, right? So I think I think that there could have been like major as major uh, aspects of this the Tukade campaign fleshed out. Uh, to, uh, to, to to spend a whole lot more time. We spent a lot more time with the Glory Station campaign, om almost as many pages, and it was just one it was just one battle. So you know, here I think you could have you know, but this was like multiple battles. <laughs> so I, again, I, I and so that's one of the reasons why I'm, I'm just giving this a seven out of ten, even though I found it just as gripping. Now. I think I think Rock was a bit interesting. Uh, I think they definitely took a chance with these three books because they're telling the lives and details um, and deep unpackings um, into people that are traditionally the antagonists in the Battletech universe, the clans, uh, rather than the inner sphere that they are invading and fighting against. And there are good guys and bad guys, you know, protagonists and antagonists, all within this. So I definitely think it fleshes it out uh, and uh, and. You know, gives gives a nice fleshed out detail. But to start with a deep dive, in the first three books of this series are this trilogy uh, that tells this story of this person uh, who starts out as as a mech warrior cadet and then becomes uh, a, re a regular warrior, then a, then a blood name warrior, uh, and and then becomes a leader of a, of a unit in a major campaign. I think that there's some interesting aspects to that, um, and so I definitely think it was it was brave uh, for Rock to start, uh, you know, a series of these things. Um, this series has, got, has more than 100 novels in it, uh, so going back and reading the first three that I read, and knocking out now the third novel in just a couple of days, uh, was definitely something that I really enjoyed uh, going back and doing. Uh, so, so again, I'm giving this a seven out of ten. Uh, the Battletech universe is set in the 31st century. Uh, it has uh, we have explored so about a thousand years into the future, we have explored and we have colonized thousands of worlds uh, and systems uh, in the in, in the world that's called this the inner inner sphere, and we have not encountered any intelligent life. And we're not the uh, the collective better people like the Federation of Star Trek. Uh, we have all of our own foibles and issues and our best parts of this uh, that we take with us to the stars. So we are just as antagonistic towards each other, you know, in in the 31st century as we are in the 21st century. Uh, which I and that key concept and conceit I I think would be very realistic. And so I find this to be one of the most realistic sort of shared universes out there. I'm going to really enjoy it. There's about a 300 year period under something called the Star League when everybody was united and on, uh, showing the best side of themselves. Uh, it falls in a coup called the Ameris Coup. Ameris takes over. He kills the leader. Uh, he takes over and then a person called General Kerensky fights off against him with the various forces and he uh, sees the universe beginning to fall so he leaves the inner sphere and forms the clans which is where the clans come from and his son will found the clans uh, and create all, all their sort of archetypes uh, and so forth uh, and the genetic breeding program that our main character comes from rather than it being a, being a, a freeborn uh, like some of the other people that are in this book and uh and so you'll find out a lot about that sort of things ha having it here um, and so the clans are now invading it there were four succession wars that took place between uh in the last 300 years that and the inner sphere has fallen further and further and further behind there are five successor states uh, that are vying for the league and they have been using more and more weapons of mass destruction especially in the first two succession wars um uh, and, and then the fourth succession war was just fought, you know, just a couple of decades before the clan invasion. Now the clans are invading, uh, and and the big stuff is happening. They want to. They, they think that the fallen sphere inner sphere has fallen way too far, and so they see themselves as the white knight coming from outside uh, the universe to come in and save these people uh, from themselves. And and so they see themselves as the good guys, and the inner sphere as the bad guys. But the inner sphere has a very very different you know take on this, right? Because they're being invaded, right? And most of the novels during the clan invasion will focus on on inner sphere people. They might have the occasional clan person or a clan battle, uh, but typically um, or a clan story in them. But typically they're going to be focused on the inner sphere during. The innovation so that's pretty cool uh, but the, I, I like the central conceit of the world uh, the Battletech universe is began as a as a well as actually, actually as, a, as a as a board game that became a war game uh, then became a, a role-playing game called mech warrior there's been a ton of uh, of, of games for for videos um, there's been a collectible card game there's been a collectible miniatures game there's been a Saturday morning cartoon there are lines of miniatures there are lines of toys 
right? There's there's a lot of IP for you to, and then 100 plus novels, right? So there's a lot of uh, different ways for you to interact with this universe. And I definitely think it's a lot of fun. And I really enjoyed the war game too. That's where I got started from in 10th grade, which is where I started picking up and reading these books. Uh, so there you are. I'll go ahead and leave you to it. Have you read Falcon Guard or the other books by Robert Thurston? If so, what'd you think about it? Again, I try to keep my reviews spoiler free. So if you want to talk about spoilers, hey, let's do it in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, why not hit that subscribe button? There's going to be a lot more of these to follow. And then finally, I want to thank you so much for taking some time out of your day and investing it and watching my video. We all have so many things that are happening in our lives and we're pulled in so many different directions. So the fact that you spent this time with me is incredibly humbling and I appreciate it. So thanks again and have an amazing day.